one of the primary goals with your service desk solution is to automate as much as possible. But the word automate can carry many different meanings in the context of your service delivery strategy. In today's session, we're going to show you where to start with some quick wins for automation and how you can further evolve into advanced automations that fit the goals and needs of your organization. I'm really excited. I have a friend um, and somebody who I've worked with several times through their evaluation, Azuna, with me today. Hey, Azuna, great to have you along. Liz, thanks for having me on as well. I'm really excited about our session together today, Azuna. I know that you've actually gone through and implemented SolarWinds Service Desk in two different organizations. So I know that you have a lot of thoughts around how teams can best look at automating with the Service Desk. Right. And just to be clear, I, I did a full evaluation both times that I did it, right? I, I didn't want to just assume that because it worked for me one place, it, it'll work for me again in the second place. But Yes, I, you know, I have adopted uh, the SolarWinds platform at uh, a couple of different organizations and frankly have made strong recommendations um, to other uh, colleagues of mine that are looking for ITSM solutions. Um, and I know at least of a couple that have um, adopted the same platform. And I'm so excited to hear more of your perspective um, on how you've gone through and actually applied those automations following your evaluation. And especially since you've been pretty well ingrained with the platform, how you've continued to evolve and expand your automation footprint. So we've got a lot of ground to cover today, but before we dive into automations headfirst, I think it's really important to lay the groundwork for how you can optimize your people and your resources in the service desk. To me, so much of automation and optimization really boils down to the user experience, which starts for a lot of people where they work. And I've seen that, and I'm sure that you can say the same, on the portal. Yeah, that's a great place to start. Um, and, it, and it's uh, not a traditional place, if you will, but it, it makes perfect sense from an automation perspective. So typically when I join an organization, um, you know, or, or I'm advising a client, what I see is that they already have some sort of shared mailbox kind of solution in place. And so step one is to convert that shared mailbox and, and now have um, those tickets now flowing through the ITSM portal um, platform. But the, the key to, the, to really driving the automation is getting people to get comfortable with the fact that they can go to one location to make requests for services of IT, whether that's a password reset, whether that's you know, a new piece of equipment, whatever the issue is that they have, um, they can go to this one place. And so we introduce the IT portal um, to them in order to do that. Now there's a chicken and egg kind of problem there, right? So people are used to emailing, um, it's very simple and easy for them to do that. So how do you drive them to go to this place to make their requests? And one of the first things we do is we actually build out an inventory of solution articles, knowledge base articles, whatever you want to kind of call them. But it's tidbits um, essentially around how they can use IT within an organization. You want to know how to reset your printer? Well, there's a tidbit there or how to reset your password. And so getting them familiarized with the portal and knowing that they can actually do a bit of self-service and find your answers is that first step. And I think with the portal in mind, as you mentioned before, it might not seem like our initial starting point for automations, but again, to me, it's representative of who you are serving the employee. So having a pulse on your employees' expectations and cultivating a positive experience, I think is really helpful in determining what and how you automate. And I think this is a perfect segue to talk about what I consider to be some of our foundational building blocks or pillars to automation um, and how you can establish some of those. So let's talk a little bit more about some of our basic automations that teams can be looking to achieve in the service desk. The next step in terms of the evolution of kind of the portal is um, automatic routing of tickets. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that with the SolarWinds platform. Um, the first one we actually do is um, set up keyword searches. So are there particular systems, for example, that are kind of unique? Um, and so we can put in a keyword for that. Um, actually, one of the very first ones we did, which was a carryover from the previous system, was we'd actually already trained our employees to put the words urgent, critical, 
you know, moderate in the title of the text um, or of the ticket or request that they put in, and that would route it accordingly so that it would show up in our queue with the appropriate priority. Um, and so we, you know, that was one of the first ones we implemented. But yeah, beyond that, it was also um, routing to specific, um, you know, subject matters or things of that nature. The other thing to to put in, you know, keep in mind is in, in my situation, I actually opened up the portal not just to IT. And so we actually have, um, you know, parts of, you know, different teams that are using the same platform. And of course, you know, that that's not a ticket that, you know, my team needs to kind of work on. And so we also use the idea behind categories and subcategories to route it, um, you know, and, and, and it's an evolving thing that you kind of do. We initially had them as subcategories within categories that we watched. And it was a little bit harder to kind of differentiate their, you know, quote unquote, their tickets versus ours. And then we eventually just said, you know what, you know, there should be like a, a whole separate category for each one of the individual teams. They should they should have their own distinct categories um, versus the IT categories. But between the keyword searching and the um, and implementing automated category um, uh, assignments, those were the, the, the first couple of areas we used to automate um, the routing of tickets. I love hearing that story as well. And I think that that's a great area where any team, regardless of your experience or organizational size, can certainly take advantage of. I particularly am a huge fan of the category or as I also call it, skill-based routing, because that again contributes to that employee experience. If I put in a ticket that is of a hardware-based nature, I know that it's going to get handled by somebody who's well-equipped to tackle my reported hardware issue. Whereas if I am recording something that's specific to my network connection, that's going to be handled by the right folks. It's also helpful for your technicians because then they don't have to spend time in the queue triaging the various inquiries that are coming around. Yep. They're able to get their work done efficiently and effectively. Yeah. Uh, at a high level, and and there are other features that SolarWinds has that I'm I'm you know a big fan of. You can do the preview button and see kind of the details of the ticket. But it's one thing for it to kind of come in prepackaged, um, you know, and, and pre-categorize. It's one less thing for the technician to do, um, and and to be able to jump right in and to be able to assist kind of the clients. Uh, frankly, even if you have a smaller firm, right, small medium business like like mine, where we kind of work as one team. Um, or certainly if you have a much larger team where you have distinct kind of functions, it's helpful. But, you know, you, you touched on a point, which was the customer experience. Um, in, in my organization, not every single application is actually managed by IT. Some of those are actually managed by, you know, individuals that are outside of IT. But, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was a seamless experience. And I, I, I personally hated that handoff um, and I didn't want us to kind of do it. And so I invited those those team members to be part of the same platform so that if you make a request around an IT system and it's not one of the ones that, quote unquote, IT manages, well, the, the end user doesn't need to know that. At the end of the day, it just needs to get routed to the right person who can act on their request. And that's, you know, that's what we've instituted with the platform by inviting some of those other teams to be part of the, the same the same solution. We're again constantly looking for ways to alleviate some of those manual or potentially redundant inputs yeah. for more streamlined motions. So beyond those basics of automation that we were just talking about, the pandemic certainly made it clear that there were some areas where we needed to meet our business objectives and day-to-day -day operations, but we were gonna have to change the way in which we handled that as we all quickly pivoted to remote operations. So during that transition period, Azuna, what were some of the ways in which your team was handling that with automations? I think you and I had talked before that you had to quickly make a pivot in terms of how you guys were delivering assets or even onboarding new users. Yeah, both of those. So as it relates to assets, right? So, um, you know, we've, we've been in this pandemic for a few months at this point, um, but it was still brand new at the time. So if I recall correctly, it was a Thursday that we made the call that the office would go fully virtual beginning the following Tuesday. And, you know, one request that came, you know, to me from my leadership was, you know, well, you know, can we let people take, you know, their, their assets home, um, their monitors, their docking stations, so that they, they have a way to kind of work remotely. And, you know, my initial response was yes, but, right. And, and the but being, it's an asset that belongs to the organization. I want to make sure that the, the organization is kind of protected and we have proper accounting for that. 
So we spun up a service catalog, right? You know, my, my team and I, we thought, you know, did we do a survey? Do we send an email out? Do, we, do people send us emails, right? So we, it was actually fairly quickly, right? I, you know, I, I just jumped into the portal and I spun up a new service catalog and then we communicated that as our message. Hey, we understand that some of you are considering you don't have home office setups and you're considering how to, you know, work, you know, in the pandemic remotely, because at the time we thought it was only going to be a few days or maybe a few weeks, but we, we had no idea. But the real, the point was, you know, whatever you took back, we wanted to make sure that we had a proper accounting for it. And so the service catalog was fairly easy. You, you know, obviously who you are, you're the requester, where, what location you're taking assets from and what assets you were kind of taking. Um, and we intentionally did it that way with kind of minimal fuss and minimal approval just because of the size of our organization, right? We, you know, again, thinking about that customer experience, we could have said, well, come down to IT and put in a request and then we'll walk back up to you. Well, you know, my team would have been running around all day or, you know, we did what we did, which was, you know, put in the sure. request and we'll go back and independently validate it afterwards, right? So we'll make sure that we properly associate the assets with that that service request and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but but that worked very well. And I, I was going to say, I, I think that that's a perfect example for kind of that next step up in what teams can be achieving with automations in their service desk. You have these processes that you've had implemented for quite a long time about how you hand out assets be it in person or remote. Um, but another example, which I know that you were gonna speak to as well was with onboarding. But I think the service catalog, just like you said, it's easy. You're able to centralize and specify what information you need up front from the requester, but then you can automate that process. So that way you can begin to seamlessly delegate who's responsible for tackling what in that checklist, if you will, to make sure the user gets what they need so it doesn't disrupt their day-to-day. -day. Absolutely. So, you know, when I started um, every week, and I kid you not every week, every week I would get a request that said, you know, well, Suzy Q is in department ABC and they're supposed to have access to this system and they don't. Um, and that was because, you know, we were using an antiquated, you know, checklist process it was very much paper based. Um, and we actually hadn't captured all the steps that were kind of involved. And so, you know, this is not just a technology solution. So I, I, I you know, I, I'll be very clear that uh, it starts with an engagement with the business. And so we really had to have that conversation. I had that conversation with my team to say, what do we need to do our job? What pieces of information do we need in order for us to satisfy the request and make sure we do it? in excellence, right? You know, you know, the, the right way the first time so that people aren't asking us for, for things, you know, the, the, on the day one of their start. And so that's, that's what we did. We went ahead and implemented, we, we figured out what data we needed. We need to figure out who needed to be there. We actually had a meeting with the business, with the different pieces, right? So our accounting department certainly is part of that because they they got to set people up in the time and billing system. Um, our, our HR and recruiting, that's traditional, right? People, you know, kind of side in terms of mm -hmm. what information they had. But we had those conversations and then we documented that workflow. And then we also gave visibility, right? I, I was very transparent and said, you will now have transparency so that when you put in a request and tell me that somebody's starting in two weeks, we'll include you in that process because there are certain activities that you have to do and there's certain activities that we have to do in order to make sure that person is um, effectively onboarded. And, and I kid you not, I mean, yes, we, you know, we worked through you know, some of the kinks, but it, it didn't take more than a month but we've, we've literally had yeah. a seamless onboarding experience since then. People come in, they get exactly what they need because we got exactly what we needed in order to make that determination. We've gone through and we've worked with the business to really understand this person needs this type of equipment, this person needs this access to this kind of system um, and, and have that, you know, and now it's all in a repeatable workflow, right? I, I don't have to look at a piece of paper. I can always go back in the, the same ITSM platform to be able to see, did we check off all the steps, you know, in order to onboard this individual? Definitely. And I think that's a great story, not only on how to achieve kind of that second level of automation, but also for advocacy with those other departments. So that was a great overview in terms of where teams could initially dip their toes into the waters of automation. But as we think about what's been happening in our environment with the pandemic, it's forced many hands to consider how they could alleviate some of their manual inputs or potential redundancies and digitize their processes and operations. 
With a lot of teams, I think a great area for them to level up their automations was with the service desk. So finding an avenue to automate their processes ranging from the intake of service requests all the way through delivering them. So let's buckle down and take a look at some of the additional creative ways that we can take our automations one step further using resources like the API or native integrations to other resources. Azuna, I know that you have done some pretty intricate API scripts to further automate some of the processes that you guys have in place for hardware. Uh, Tell me a little bit about what you've done with the API and your service desk. Sure. The API was actually, my my background is in software development. So the API was actually a a compelling feature for me in terms of being able to kind of get into the back end and really be able to manipulate the system beyond whatever might be in in the user interface. Uh, one area in particular was around, um, you know, importing and updating kind of hardware assets. Um, the, the user interface allows you to import them, but certainly the management of them, um, you know, can be a little bit more complicated or, you know, kind of involved. And so uh, uh, SolarWinds actually puts out uh, Ruby scripts. I think there are a couple of different languages that they support as well. Um, there's a GitHub re- repository that has that. And so I've, I've leveraged that, you know, not just for hardware, right, importing new hardware, you know, whenever we get, you know, batches, like not one-offs, um, as well as in particular for our user base. Um, I have looked at other solutions, um, you know, um, Active Directory type solutions, um, SSO type sign-on solutions, um, and we just didn't feel like it was enough of a, of, of a reason for us to do it. Um, and so, so instead, what I do is I literally take an export out of Active Directory, I have a Ruby script and we just run, have that run on an automated fashion, you know, roughly once a week, you know, we keep titles in sync, we keep locations in sync, you know, levels, things of that nature um, for our employee pool. Um, and, and that's actually worked very, very well. Um, I've made it so that Active Directory is the system of record for the organization at large. Um, and this just is one of many systems that are inheriting Um, It's just that because of that API, it's a lot easier to actually keep that data up to date than, you know, having to write something else, right? Database scripts or things of that nature. Absolutely. And I think that's a great way to look at some of the other methods that teams could consider when uh, bringing and adopting more automation into their service desk platform. Some of the other cool ones as well have been with native tie-ins. Um, So I look to teams that have also integrated with their communication platforms like Slack. Um, But then beyond that, there's other ways, just as you mentioned, bringing other teams into the service desk fold, um, leveraging their monitoring solutions like our native integration with Orion and being able to automatically populate data around an alert to take action on an incident. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, another one that you you didn't mention is the remote viewer. So uh, SolarWinds has a, a built-in kind of remote viewer session because um, one of the things that we, we run into right now is um, a request comes in and the first thing my team will do is, you know, Skype IM them and then do a team viewer session. Um, and so that's obviously outside the platform. And just for my purposes and, and for documentation, I ask, you know, the team, they'll take a screenshot or something and say, I messaged the client. But now with an integration like, you know, a remote viewer, it's nice because it will automatically log that that transaction happened, right? And so I can assume if my team connected to the person's computer, they have, you know, at least attempted to resolve it even if, you know, or resolved it. So that's super awesome to hear. Thanks so much for your time today, Azuna. I really enjoyed our conversation. And I think a lot of people will be able to walk away from their session feeling a bit more empowered to take a look into how they can automate their service desk further. Yeah, thanks, Liz. It's always you know great catching up with you. Um, it's always great kind of talking to you, and it's always nice to learn about you know, the new capabilities that kind of SolarWinds is rolling out. Absolutely, and and really loved hearing how you started and continue to push the envelope with automations. Thanks so much for your time, Azuna. It was great catching up as always.